Good day! It's July 8th and I think I'm finally done planting everything. So I had a couple more shopping items to put into the ground um, this week and I'll show you those as well as uh, the city has um, <clears throat> taken all those fallen trees from that big storm we had last month and they've um, provided us with mulch. It's like it's not really like super cut up or anything. It's pretty chunky, so I'll just show it to you right now. And um, there's different spots in town where you can pick it up for free. And I haven't mulched my garden yet because I was still planting. So yeah, there are like large chunks here, but there's, you know, it's pretty good. Um, and I think that from what I'm told, having this type of mulch in the garden um, breaks down slower and actually suppresses weeds even more. So I think it should be okay. And it's about time I put something down so it retains moisture. Although I do have clay soil, I have amended it a lot with some pro mix, garden mix, and um, also by digging and putting a lot of the new plants in, I noticed that <laughs> I would end up having a lot of clay soil on the top surface and what's happening there is that there's just runoff from the rain because clay is like a slippery slope and so what i'm seeing is because my yard is um very much on a slope what's happening is that all of the rain water isn't necessarily being absorbed in the plants up top here it's kind of just dripping straight down to the back so the back gets a lot more um rain water kind of like sitting there than the sides do so uh, I think the mulch is going to help in that department also might make it just generally look better I don't know they're pretty ch chunky pieces so might not look the, the best and it's just all different types of trees like they didn't they didn't specify they I think they just dumped it all in a big pile it was about five feet high the pile in here in um Canada Stittsville area so okay so first I'm going to show you some of the new items I just put in Actually, no, I'm going to do the mulching first and then I'm going to show you um, what I've moved and what I've put in recently. Go, go. Stop eating the plants. Go, go. So I'm all done and I actually added cutting the grass and watering um, on the time lapse while I was at it, as you saw. So now I'll just go through, Coco, please, interrupt him. Um, I'll just go through the new stuff that I've changed since the last tour. So did I, did I get enough shredded wood? No, I did not. <laughs> Don't have enough mulch to cover every area. So I focused on my hydrangeas first. Um, the roses and just things that I noticed would look sad um, whenever they obviously ran out of water first and I did my best to just spread it around I might just go back and get some more I don't know the whole goal of this garden is that eventually I'll have just ground cover everywhere and you won't even see soil there's um, the ground covers that I have are some creeping phlox creeping sedum the yellow star variety um i mean most likely the nepeta kind of can act like a ground cover dianthus doesn't spread enough but maybe <laughs> some more sedums just i'm 
I'm waiting to have them spread out. I don't want to buy any more because I've spent a lot of money. So I'm just going to wait until some of these ground covers, like the lamium will definitely spread the fastest and I can keep moving that around. And so that's why I didn't put any <clears throat> of the wood chips there because I, I the lamium will probably fill that in by the end of August. And then uh, once everything's filled in, um, it will retain moisture, you know, just as good as mulch would. And without taking away some of the nitrogen from the soil, because apparently the wood chips um, and mulch basically takes, uh, you know, once it's like starts composting, it takes <laughs> the nitrogen from the soil, apparently. And so you have to replenish the nitrogen by adding fertilizer with nitrogen in the soil. And I'm like, wow, that's slightly annoying. So it like the goal would obviously be that I have ground cover on the bottom here so that I never have to mulch again. Obviously this stuff will only break down in like four years probably because they're chunky pieces. Look at the chunks. And uh, that's going to take some time, <laughs> which is fine. Um, so I've added some flocks here <clears throat> and I moved the hibiscus from impartial sun over there to full sun over here as more of a feature plant as well. Um, hopefully the climbing rose yellow variety will work. I don't know, roses are tough to keep. I don't know, we'll see. I'll, I'm gonna really try to protect it over the winter. And that'll be a big focal point for most of the summer. And then this pops in what, like mid-August, it starts to bloom. But I like the foliage, you know, that purple color. It's got like an ombre effect, which is cool. So this phlox, I wasn't sure if it was phlox because also having some sort of like interesting dual colored leaves, I wasn't sure if it was phlox, but it did have the leaf that looked like phlox and it sure enough, it flowered and it is. <clears throat> I got a cone flower there. I put a sedum there. I moved him twice. He's looking a little rough. Probably needs a good snip as some of the baby growth here is um, pushing through. So I should probably, it's just that there's still blooms and I'm like, Argh. okay. So it, it's a nice pop of yellow. I got more of the blue boulder grass. So I put that in. I bought this cone flower as well. It's almost, almost red. Um, so I love the color and I don't have a lot of red in this area. The cardinal has red. Um, didn't change anything here. Didn't change anything here, except for finally these have bloomed. But the their growth over overshines the, or you know, covers them a bit. This new growth, so there's some in there. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> it's doing okay for its second year. That's uh, I can't ask for better than that. And once um, they start to like finish, I'll snip them off, and then I'm gonna add another. Um, fertilizer because it's supposed to have a second round or it's supposed to be ever blooming all summer so once these this batch is done I'm gonna give it some of the fertilizer that is specifically for this type of hydrangea to um, I think it's got like the acidic one to make it more of a purpley pink or a even a blue but it no my I, I'm so alkaline here alkaline here that it's never I'm never gonna get blue hydrangeas but that's okay because I have blue delphiniums and I like this type of pink with the pilu. Um, yeah, delphiniums are pretty much finishing up, except for the white. The white was latest, so I didn't even have white, I don't think, in my video. And it, I, it really stands out against the fence, I think, so I like the white. Sometimes I forget to get white flowers. And okay, nothing here, nothing here has changed. Uh, I think, yeah, I added this heuchera and... I moved the Black Eyed Susans from like under the shrub to right there. And my bee balm is, Monarda is blooming. And I basically bought one of these from someone for five bucks, one of them. And it this multiplied three over here and it was split off from over there. So from one last year to now seven, that's pretty good spreads pretty nicely and I don't know what's going on with this maybe someone can tell me but I, I mean I think it's a coneflower I think it's echinacea <laughs> why is it just a seed head it did not blossom like there's no petals 
is this, is this, I don't remember this from last year. I think I divided this from a comb flare over there that I'll show you, so I don't know, but that's weird. And I wasn't sure if this was gonna be white or purple, and it ends up being white, which I love, because again, I always forget to buy white things. My lungwort it is about to bloom. There's the buds. And what is it, like purple, pink, and blueish flowers? So I can't wait to see that, actually. <clears throat> More Minarda, sea balm. But this is a, the short one. <laughs> it's like a dwarf variety. So there's the echinacea. It's like a coral color. And I thought I had split this and put some over there. But maybe I didn't. I don't know what is over there. I don't know why. It's just like the, the center. <laughs> no petals. Um, Minarda. And nothing's different here. I barely, I didn't even put any mulch much here except for right there because I noticed there was wilting so that's fine and I, I honestly didn't even I shouldn't even have put any here it was fine it's just because I have a a hydrangea here I don't remember this was in the video or not but it's a pinky winky hydrangea and what else did I buy what else did I buy oh I moved some stuff here so that's another flocks I bought like six flocks and I've also bought some tick seed. No, this is all the same. Oh, there's more phlox. It's really pretty. And there's the new tick seed that I bought. And I think it's just called yellow and red or something like that. And then this is the sun kiss I had last year that didn't make it. So I don't even know why I bought it again. I just really like um, tick seed. And I, I just find because it acts like an annual, right? Blooms the whole summer. But I don't know why it didn't survive. So I was worried of putting mulch down because um, a lot of my perennials didn't survive. And I, I had put mulch down. I had put straw down before the winter. And I think that was a huge mistake because then it waterlogged everything. And I got a lot of, um, like, almost too much moisture and a lot of rot. So that wasn't good. And I have a rose back here in the shade. It's a uh, dru druin. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it's bright pink, and it's a climber as well. I had kind of jimmied up this trellis, do-it-yourself trellis, and just um, stapled it <laughs> with a staple gun. Um, and I'm hoping to just like kind of weave it back and forth once it grows but I don't know if they're gonna take um again some people are telling me that these roses are really just not hardy and I believe them <laughs> but I'm gonna give it a go and we'll see what happens in the center bed here this little island I just filled it with more uh echinacea phlox dianthus sedum cat's pajamas over there I moved stuff around I, um, and I wanted the dianthus on this edge and the water slopes that way. I think they can tolerate it better. Um, oh, and this, um, uh, this penstemon is supposed to be a purple leaf, but it, it kind of has green at the bottom. I, I, I don't know. This was, again, it was in, in its nursery pot, so we'll see how it does next year. This is just like, I really like the center island because it just has so many colors. And some people would be like, no, there's no theme. You should have more of the same stuff throughout. But I only have this much yard and I want all the things. I want one of each and there's still lots of room to spread. So I think I've picked all the flowers and shrubs that I actually really love and put them in and now it's just spread them around um, like there's a huge gap there behind that I can put something um, also this is gonna fill up right it's hopefully gonna get nice and big and this guy's gonna get nice and big well actually I don't know because this is a incredible and don't you cut those back all the way 
almost to the base. So we'll see, but I still have the juniper that's gonna grow big. I can shove a couple delphiniums in here just for fun. And they'll just shoot right up for this month. And this will get wider as well. So, you know, like it will it all fill in eventually. Oh yeah, and my bloomerang, I wasn't expecting it to bloom meringue <laughs> to do a second set of blooms, but I think it will. Got a little bit going on here at the tips. Um, okay, not much, just like that one, basically. And it's its first year, like it's probably working on its root settlement anyways, but if I get a couple extra blooms in second round, that's pretty cool. I was thinking like maybe I should have put some sort of like quick fire hydrangea tree here instead. But I really wanted to see if this bloomerang would work because then you would get it flowers in the spring as well as midsummer. Like, it's pretty cool. I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. We'll see. And this is doing so great. I love, I love this like change of color. It's so pretty. It's tiger eyes sumac. And, um, yeah. So now hopefully things will retain a little bit more moisture than they did before. It's better than nothing. I know I didn't put a lot of mulch down, but it's better than nothing. And I might head back. Um, there was quite a significant pile left. I could probably get some more. <laughs> Looks kind of funny though. It's like, maybe because I don't have enough. I don't know. It's kind of like those pathways when you're hiking. <laughs> so I know the black mulch looks a lot nicer, but it's dyed and they say it's not as good as just getting like raw wood chips. So, mm. and then, uh, yeah, fertilizer for nitrogen. Do I need to do that? Like I didn't put that much down. I wonder if I need to go buy something to replenish, like maybe only in a couple months. Oh gosh. I just found some wood chips in my shorts. <laughs> uh. And on that note, have a nice day. It's so pretty out. Yay. And I'm going to probably just hang out in the backyard and suntan.